Morning. <laughs> Wiley and I, well, I, <laughs> maybe Wiley thinks about it too, woke up this morning saying one of the best bits of social media science I have seen in a long term. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Tim Ventura and Martin Rees. Two great minds. It was so smart of Tim to reach out to Martin Rees. Martin is a a friend of a friend from Cambridge. He's an astronomer who's worked at Trinity and at uh, the Cavendish Laboratory and is currently the Royal Astronomer for Britain. And what Martin Rees did with this Tim Ventura interview, which I strongly advise you to go and watch, is not think about why there's crashed flying saucers with bodies inside. No. Look at the big picture. Look at some of the science behind the universe. How aliens evolve, time scales, distances. I think the focus is completely wrong. To look for crashed flying saucers without answering some of the big questions. And the best thing that Martin Rees brought up in this fantastic interview was humans and evolution. Fantastic. His thesis goes like this, that us flesh and blood creatures that live on this planet have evolved because of our four-bit DNA. And the thing that makes us evolve, the driving force for human and animal evolution on planet Earth is... Survival of the fittest, aggression, ability to procreate, all the things that make you nasty, really, in this earth. Okay, successful, but not super intelligent. Not looking for the best thing for our race, not looking at all for the best thing for our planet, but reacting to our planet and becoming stronger. You know, and that's what we see in us, our present evolution as humans. The ones in charge are aggressors, they're the military, they are the tough guys and tough girls who are the big wigs of society. They're not the ones looking at how could we evolve and make our species better. But technology does do that. And that's what he said. The future of us, the human race, and possibly how aliens have evolved could be AI. Because an AI system doesn't look at the survival of the fittest. It looks at how better it would be if it was smarter. It can live forever indefinitely. It can decay and download its program to another copy of itself, which could be slightly better. And it's immortal. So what Martin Rees argues is an answer to the Fermi paradox. Okay, so back up here, Simon. The Drake equation. How many life forms are there in the visible universe or in our own galaxy, the Milky Way? There should be signs of life from hundreds of thousands of species like us, all producing the I Love Lucy show out there that we can see, and there aren't. Why? And that's the Fermi paradox. Where is everybody, and why do we seem to be alone in the universe? What Martin Rees argues is that we are not alone, <laughs> but the smart bunnies out there, little green men, the aliens, are AI. The AI is a step in organic evolution. That humans and goats and all the pets that we have on our farm are strong because they react to their environment and are the successful aggressive ones. The weak ones have died. Sadly true. Just like our chickens and sheep, humans tend to evolve using our very simple DNA evolution system to become nastier and stronger, but survivors. One possible end result of Darwinian evolution through DNA of a flesh and blood type species, like the animals and creatures and us on Earth, 
is we destroy ourselves. We end up with an ultimate super lord who decides that you should all die. Whereas AI doesn't do that, we hope. It evolves to become better and better and better and better. So maybe the answer to the Fermi paradox, and I'm getting this very much from Martin Rees, is that we are just a hiccup in history. We are a tiny bit of how intelligence and other aliens evolve, and they've gone way beyond that, and they have become a technological race of superminds using what we call AI, but that kind of computer-based intelligence who value different things. They don't value conquering. They don't go to another, across an ocean and conquer a distant race that we kind of assume an alien would do. No, that would be a very early part of their evolution. As a super brain in a box, an AI super intelligence wouldn't come here. They don't need to. They would be having priorities on their home planet to look after themselves and make themselves better. Now, the only possibility is that they run out of resources and they come here to planet Earth and because we have something that they need to further their AI society. And I think that's quite possible. I think over the thousands of years, tens of thousands of years that humans have been on Earth, we have been visited by probes who've come into our solar system and maybe concentrated on planet Earth because it is very accessible, has interesting resources, and then just, just, just maybe looked at these strange life forms on Earth and then just, 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 just looked at humans. I mean, <laughs> I think we're putting ourselves on a bit of a pedestal for a super intelligent AI species to come all the way from their planet over a millennia, or they've mastered wormholes and faster than light travel, to come here and be interested in us? Why? I don't think we're part of a super intelligent um, advanced race. I think we're um, cavemen who are struggling to pull ourselves out of the mud at present. And I think that there is a great possibility that we will destroy ourselves, but we will evolve to be a super intelligent AI race. That's quite depressing, but that could be the answer to UAP, that they're not flesh and blood aliens, they're a super intelligent AI type of drone who are coming here who might want to communicate with us, but probably not because they could see all the downsides of having any interaction with flesh and blood. They've long evolved from that. And they're only here to gather data and to look at our resources. So let's not consider little green men in crashed aluminum flying saucers. We need to ask the Martin Rees, Tim Ventura big questions. The Drake Equation, the Fermi Paradox. Are humans part of this system? Where are the aliens? What would an alien craft be? Have they visited us? In what form could they come and why would they be coming? Those, are, I think, are smarter, bigger questions, which congressional hearings into bits of metal that Lockheed Martin might be interested in is just too narrow for me. I want to ask, like Martin and Tim Ventura, the big questions. Go and watch Martin's interview on the Tim Ventura channel and see what you take from it. Do you agree that our human evolution, our DNA, has led to the survival of the fittest? And that's not necessarily the best way of evolving? Do you think us, we, you and I will destroy each other? in less than a century and something else will follow us and do you think a technological future is quite likely and that's the way that aliens actually exist those are the type of questions that i like to ponder and that's why i'm kind of frustrated at the overly simplistic crashed flying saucer story because 
it's not really looking as I call the big picture. Where is everybody? How and why would an alien species visit planet Earth? Let's get away from rubbishing a fellow human who has suffered from PTSD, poor David Grush. Let's look at the big picture of how our universe might work. Let's ask smart, sensible questions. You and I need to grab the UAP story out of the hands of the military and governments and actually bring it back into the public domain, the domain for humanity to ask that big question, are we alone? And for science to actually ask smart, sensible questions about how did they get here? What's the nature of their life form? What's their craft like? Are they interdimensional? All the questions which aren't really being asked in a smart way. That's what I enjoy. And hopefully you do too. Because the truth really is out there.